Hey, welcome back to Down Below Discussion with our new uh, Faster Formula. If you like the formula, by the way, please let us know. And if you have questions you'd like us to answer, please let us know immediately in the com comments below. We do our best to answer all feedback. I am Steve. I am Ian. And uh, today he is going to be asking me a question that I'll have to answer in five minutes or less as best I can. So, as the setting and character and story guru, how about if you give us some quick reasons, five and five minutes would be ideal, for why characters get involved in adventures, intrigues, and other unpleasant but interesting to the player situations. All right, here we go. Five and five minutes. One of my favorites to use is the mistaken identity, also known as the wrong place, wrong time. Down below is a world of massive surveillance and minimal privacy, which means that one of the best ways to get away with something is to frame some other poor sucker. The players are, uh, in this case, either uh, closely uh, uh, close duplicates. For instance, we both have a friend who looks very much like famous actor Leonardo DiCaprio. If he should happen to be in the same place and walking by the right camera at the right time, Leonardo could be blamed for something that he did. Uh, so by making sure that uh, the perpetrators did not have things like retinal prints, fingerprints, or DNA easily accessible, the players could easily get swept up, mistaken for the wrong person. So it's a basic frame-up for something bad that you have to either prove your innocence or run away from the consequences of, or something good that is actually not what it seems. Yep. The second thing that I'm going to talk about, the second way that players can get involved in intrigues is to, is again, this is a classic one, this is more player instigated than GM instigated in this case, but it's the classic situation of the players have a little information, choose to go digging for more information, and end up embroiling themselves well in over their head. I call this the hornet's nest approach. You see a strange looking rock, you kick it, and suddenly you are surrounded by angry murderous bee folk. Uh, in this case it could be as simple as the players uh, being down below residents uh, investigating some corruption in the local government that they are seeking to exploit, finding out that that corruption actually goes far higher up the chain than they had thought, getting in over their heads and suddenly they have people coming after them for what they're doing or what they're knowing. It could also be as simple as the players just being in the wrong place at the wrong time, overhearing the wrong word, and having to figure out why does hearing the word fruitcake result in ninjas coming after us. So the burn after reading plot. Exactly. So third possible plot, having the right skill at the right time or if you prefer the wrong time. News is always the wrong time. If it was the right skill at the right time, you would do the job and you'd be done. Players will simply, by virtue of being player characters, have access to a lot of interesting skills. In my last thing, I talked about the identity launderer, for instance. Mm -hmm. Nobody really wants to play a character who is just a janitor. Even if they're masquerading as a janitor or paying the bills as a janitor, their real job is something else. If you have skills in as an identity launderer, that means that you are clearing identities through whatever contacts you have to give to people. That means that to do your job, you need to get your name out there. And when you get your name out there, eventually someone is going to come along at a time that you're not fully prepared. They're going to need you to do a job quickly, and they're going to need you to do a job well. And that's going to lead to complications, which are going to lead to intrigue, which is going to lead to a breadcrumb trail of mystery and adventure. Because either the person who hired you on the job stiffs you, or... Maybe someone kills them, and now what are you going to do? It's important to note that the Lots right skill. It's important to note that the right skill, wrong time situation is not always by itself a hook. It is usually a hook into one of the others. But hey, a hook is a hook. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the possibility of by accident. I am instead going to talk about the possibility of on purpose. In a lot of other games, this could be known as the murder hobo syndrome, or to hmm. quote Firefly. We aim to be. We aim to misbehave. Some players are just troublemakers. Uh, in many games, possibly even many down below games, the players will take it upon themselves to seek out trouble. I'm listing this because this is valid. Talk to your players during character creation. Talk to your players during session creation. Sometimes they'll just want to be outlaws. Robin Hood would uh, not be as compelling if Robin of Loxley had said, I've lost my family estate, let me just go sit in the woods for a while. He was actively seeking out ways to misbehave. Finally, the, way, the last way I'm going to talk about quickly to uh, embroil players and player characters in intrigues and mysteries and other ill-begotten schemes is, well, it's an analogy of the aiming to misbehave. It's the one step ahead situation. Mm -hmm. 
This is the Han Solo situation. Han Solo does not specifically aim to misbehave. Han Solo is a smuggler by trade. He probably has some skills that could be used to earn a legitimate living. But really, Han Solo would like to live his bad boy lifestyle while rustling as few feathers and making as few waves as possible. Problem is, something went wrong further back down the line, and now he has to stay one step ahead of the debt, collect uh, de de debt collectors, one step ahead of Jabba the Hutt, one step ahead of the bounty hunters, one step ahead of Imperial patrols. This He's also just really good at ruffling people's feathers. Basically, this means that once your players have made the first step into the story, there will almost always be something one step behind them that you can introduce, and by propelling them forward, whatever they're doing, if they're moving forward, they're getting involved in intrigues, they're getting involved in situations, and they have to stay one step ahead of whatever else lurks down below. Dropping a couple bonus ones at the end, always remember the classic body on the floor and when all else fails have ninjas attack options for getting things rolling. So this has been Ian and Steve designing an RPG through vlogging with you one step at a time. Please give us questions and if you liked this, like and subscribe. See you tomorrow.